Hello fellow bassist. So today I want to make a tutorial for a bass line by Frank Moody uh, for the song She's Too Good For Me. It's a very funky song, very groovy bass line, I really like it. And the good thing is it's easy to play, it's like a simple bass line that's uh, basically just two measures and then you just play it over for the whole song. So it's not gonna be like lots of different variants and lots of different subtleties to play and to learn and to put at the exact right moment. So that makes it easy as well for beginners, which is great. Uh, and yet, it's, uh, it's still very groovy and very funky. And with funk, more than with anything, less is more. And here, you listen to the first 10 seconds of the song, and you have the groove in your head, and the groove knows you, and that's it, that's all done. You don't have to think anymore about it, just, you're just bouncing at that point. That's, that's what we like, that, that's what makes funky riffs great. So first, let's listen to the bass line. So the bass line is in G, uh, so we can, it's pretty much all on the pentatonic scale on G, so... It's gonna be mostly just those notes and the addition of the plain A, we're gonna see later. And uh, let's start from the beginning, so it starts with... So it's just 3rd fret and 1st fret. I wonder how fast I should go in the tutorial, actually. Uh, tell me in the comments what do you think. Uh, but let, let's start again, so... So now... It's gonna be 3rd fret here, on the 8th string. And then you slide it to the 5th fret. And you add the... Uh, the 5th note, which is gonna be 7th fret on the D string. And that's hard to do. Uh, to explain this kind of stuff, so... And you kind of want to bounce on this, uh, so that's a C, C note, and uh, you want to bounce on it a little bit, so... See, like, this needs to be jumpy, I think you need to feel, you basically need to feel the groove when you play, and it's gonna come naturally, I think, I don't really, it's hard to explain, so... Okay, so yeah, slide this, 3 to 5, you add the 7s here, So you play the open A string here, and then you quickly uh, play the first and third, and you slide to the third. So it's gonna be the same movement we did here, but we're gonna do it here, and we add the uh, uh, the empty string at first. How do you call that in English, actually? Open string. So um, let's do this. Let's do it from the beginning again. And then, yeah, we go back as well. So after adding the third string here, we go back to the C. And I think I'm mixing everything. It's gonna be super hard to follow. Um, so yeah, that's what we do. Then you go back to the C, and then you go open, open string again, and then first fret. Uh, so let's do it from the beginning again. And uh, then you can finish with the... which links to the beginning of the next measure. So it starts with a dead note on the... Uh, well, on the first string, on the E string. And uh, then it's a chromatic uh, ascension, I guess. Not sure how you call that. So it's gonna be one, two, three. And the three is actually the beginning of the next measure. So it's gonna be what we started with. Uh, so you want to do. So that note here is pretty important. It like it adds some groove to it, some kind of rhythmic uh, feel. So yeah. Yeah. 
what I like to do here sometimes is uh, kind of slide in that, like from uh, going to the to the G to the C, from the G to the C. Kind of hard to explain just from there, but when it's in the groove, it's pretty natural sometimes. So what I did here, I told you, you know, there's one dead note before this, so we do like... But sometimes I like to add two of them, so I add one a bit earlier instead of adding a blank. And that tweaks the groove a little bit and adds something as well. So I, I usually like uh, alternate every variant or like just play how I feel, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, otherwise, Yeah, I don't know what to, what to explain more than that, to be honest. And uh, if you like slap, for the first couple bars where there's no bass playing, I actually added some uh, slap intro. So uh, it sounds like this. Look a bit closely at the slap part. Uh, it begins with. So I just wait the first two measures blank, and then on the first uh, first time of the third measure, I play this. And uh, to get into the groove, I like to just do an empty slap movement, like in the air, kind of you know, like I keep playing like this with my hand, listening to the beat, and then I do. And that helps me be at the right time and uh, stay in the groove. And uh, so slowly it will look. And uh, then I wait a little bit. And I guess this you mostly do by feeling. I don't respect a certain timing here. Uh, but then I'm gonna. So here I'm going to be on the 5th fret, 8th string, and same thing, I add the octave with my little finger here, so... And I kind of slide down as well as I slap, uh, at the same time as I slap, so... So the next part I do... So you can notice that my left hand so my slapping hand is mostly doing the same movement all the time. And then I decide with my right hand if I'm gonna actually play the notes or if I'm just gonna add empty notes. Uh, so that's why it sounds like this. You can see it's always doing. And then I just add the notes here. And this helped me stay into the groove. So. Just the last two here, I I just thump on it without adding the picking because it feels more natural like that. So from the beginning. More solid, but it's actually hard to play that slowly here. Oh, I also add a little slide here, which uh, I think adds something to it. Uh, and then I do the same the same thing, but then I'm gonna tweak a little bit the second part, so So this is a bit more complex. Uh, the beginning is the same, so 
and then I'm gonna thump twice on this one, like kind of bounce on it. So yeah, I slide again. And then you want to pick, so... I thump this, uh, the first fret here, then I slide on it, then I, I thump into the, into the void, kind of, I do just a dead knock, and that helps me keep my, preserve my hand movement, so I'm able to pick this one, and, uh, so I, I do that movement, that's why I keep adding dead notes there, so. And then I finish by the, the G here, so uh, third fret. And uh, then I, I do the same beginning again. I finish like this, so... And then I quickly start with uh, the actual riff, because it starts just right away about, like, depending on how you add blanks to the riff. Okay, so let's do it slowly from the beginning. original riff right away. So that's pretty much it. I hope that helps. Man, it's hard to explain this shit. Fuck this shit.